Well, <laughs> what do playing sports and learning music with Sola have in common? Well, other than we practice both. <laughs> You're about to learn three things playing sports and playing music have in common. And it's time to play ball <laughs> as I reveal uh, reason number 10 in the top 15 reasons why we learn music theory faster. I'm Glory St. Germain, along with Sola from Ultimate Music Theory. And after years of teaching, uh, professional development, and researching, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, uh, researching, uh, I created the Ultimate Music Theory program together with Sheila McKibben Uren. Now, we've act impacted thousands of teachers through the Ultimate Music Theory certification course and uh, the Ultimate Music Theory workbooks and the app and games to share these concepts in how we learn more effectively. And I'm really excited to share these must-have step-by-step strategies to teach music theory concepts and in an engaging and fun and, most importantly, memorable way. So here's why you learn music theory faster through play. <clears throat> Reason number eight. <laughs> Reason number eight is play is healthy, spontaneous, and not scripted. So playing games is healthy. Playing games uh, improves our physical ability, our, our, uh, our posture, our movement in our hands, in our arms, in our fingers, in our sitting positions at the piano. And it really contributes to um, our coordination and um, exploring how we're going to use the pedals. Play is also spontaneous. Play is totally unplanned. It's a child's uh, impulses that they can just change their minds in a second and the maybe an activity where the toy doesn't work or something. So it really is just something that is spontaneous and the child decides sometimes to do things differently. <laughs> play is also not scripted. And yes, we play uh, the game. We have rules and um, we also have a certain goal that we want to achieve. But in essence, it's really the unknown that really is what happens just spontaneously. Uh, and it really gives us an opportunity to develop flexibility in our thinking and decision making, mm -hmm. which is an essential tool that we need to develop an essential skill. Well, I'm a party girl and I like to play games and I like to be spontaneous and be flexible while having fun learning, which is why we created the Ultimate Music Theory Party Pack. Now, the UMT Party Pack includes the prep game pack, the basic game pack uh, with eight laminated games uh, and six ways to play on the other side and your whiteboard and your Sol and Tito stuffies. And it really is everything that you need to get started in learning through play. So today we're gonna be playing a game from the prep game pack called Sports Notes. And I can hardly wait to share it with you. So this game pack also includes the prep uh, game chart, which I'm gonna show you is on the back and also the guide, which is on the back as well. And so here we're gonna be learning about how to play sports notes when we're identifying ledger lines and notes on the staff lines and spaces from two ledger lines below the staff all the way up to two ledger lines above the treble staff. Now in prep one and prep two rudiments, these are the workbooks here, Students are learning about line notes and space notes, and they're also learning how to um, write ledger lines correctly. So sometimes it's important for us to see mistakes so we can understand the right way to do things. So here they're learning all their notes on the staff. And as you can see, they're also learning the correct and incorrect way to draw ledger lines above and below the staff. So that's just a little tip when you get in there. And these workbooks, the uh, prep one is the green book and prep two is the purple book. They follow one another. And these are really uh, the stepping stone for all musicians. We've got to learn the basics, right? So whether you're uh, an adult learner or whether you're uh, just a teenager or just a young beginning student, this is the best way to get started. So now let's have some fun. We're gonna start with a prep game called Sports Notes. So <laughs> let's see what this one is all about. 
Um, if you've ever played sports, then you know, well, I, first of all, I remember playing basketball at high school and I played soccer and baseball. I don't think I ever played football, but um, I know my husband, Ray, he is an avid football fan. So he's the big sports fan in the family. Now, today we're going to play Sports Note, and I bet you're going to be a fan <laughs> as well. On the back, you're going to see six ways to play the game. Now, first, we're going to play the tabletop version with Sola finds her seat. So find Sola's seat. So how are we going to play that? So the goal is, is that Sola is going to start at the bottom, and she's going to go all the way up the staff until she gets to the very, very top. And that is Sola's seat. She's at the top of the sports arena. So starting at the bottom, um, I'm going to roll. If I had a dice, I'd just roll the dice here. And, and it says seven. Okay, so now I'm going to move up seven. So I'm going to count from the bottom. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And here I'm going to land on C. So now I can spot the note on the staff. And the cool thing is about this game, and I wanna tell you a little secret about how the games even came to be. So a little side story here. Um, I was presenting the Ultimate Music Theory Certification course as a live event together with UMT uh, examiner, Sheila mckibben Duran, And we met professional games designer, uh, Joanne Barker. And Joanne Barker became an Ultimate Music Theory certified teacher. And as a professional game designer, we thought, this is a perfect fit. <laughs> and so Joanne Barker designed all of these games and we absolutely love them. And this is actually one of my favorites. And the cool thing is here is that when students are identifying a note, okay, so there you can see C, they can also associate it to the key on the keyboard. So I've simply written the note C right on the keyboard here. And that is the most important thing is that we wanna connect, of course, the sound, the reading on the staff, and where is that at the correct pitch on the keyboard. So now, uh, if you don't answer that question correctly, then you have to roll the dice again. And if you move two and answer it incorrectly, you have to move backwards two. <laughs> so now we're going down two. So when you're playing your sports notes, you want to get the goal of getting up to the top. But, you know, as improv would have it, sometimes you got to go backwards. So I'm going to now um, pick one of the games because I like soccer. So now I'm going to uh, take all of the soccer balls that you see on the grand staff and I'm going to write them on my whiteboard and I'm going to use half notes, identifying these notes at the correct pitch. So as you can see, I've taken my um, soccer balls from the game, right? You can see them all the way up. And now I've written them on the staff. I can sneak that in a little bit closer. <laughs> and I've written them on the staff. So now we're going to create these as half notes. And the thing is, we also have to use our rest rules about donuts and pizza that you learned in a previous video. So when we're adding our note stems, we have to remember the directions. So when the, the note head is below the middle line, the stem goes up on the right, like D and don't donuts. When the note head is above the middle line, the stem goes down on the left, like P in pizza. So that's pretty fun and tasty. <laughs> so let's see where our stems went. We have donuts, donuts, and pizza, and donuts, and donuts again, and pizza. <laughs> now what we're gonna do is take our notes on the staff and associate them to the keys on the keyboard. And what I like to do is always identify where is middle C, and I've just drawn a little happy face in there. So we always wanna identify where is middle C so that we know what exactly we're going to be writing on our staff. So now it's time to look at the back of the sports uh, game. So now we're going to flip it over to the back and we're going to play um, at the piano variation with a little game that's called key signature kickoff, key signature kickoff. So using your dry eraser, your dry erase marker that comes with your whiteboard kit, we're going to choose a key signature. So you might choose um, 
O, F major, uh, B flat major, G major, D major, and write that key signature at the beginning of the game. So I'm going to choose D major key signature, and I'm going to write F sharp and C sharp. So I'll just put that up here. And I'm going to write F sharp and C sharp in the treble staff. And I'm also going to write F sharp and C sharp in the bass staff. Okay, so now what should we do? Well, now it's time to go up to the piano. And so at the piano, observing the key signature of D major, F sharp and C sharp, students must play and say the notes, the sports notes, beginning at the bottom, and they're going to go all the way up the ladder, right from start to fine. And fine, of course, is the Italian term for the end. So when we play, we start with, at the bottom, we start with C sharp, right? And we're going up the ladder. I would have to start down here. So I'm going to play C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp, and then D, and so on. So you can see we're going all the way up. But remember, we have to identify the note names as we play them and also associate them to the keys on the keyboard at the correct pitch and we get to hear them. That's awesome. <laughs> so now on the back side of the whiteboard, you can play accidental kickoff with your student whiteboard. So I've actually got it ready for you. But now you know I am such an artist. <laughs> so there's accidental kickoff. This looks like fun. So we've been learning about our sports notes and now we're going to do accidental kickoff. So how do we play this game? Well, with your student, they will sit beside you at the keyboard. So now we're going to sit together at the keyboard. And it's uh, one thing that we also want to make sure that we're reading the notes on the staff. And we also recognize the key on the keyboard. And we also want to name and identify those. So this is accidental kickoff. So have your student um, sit beside you at the keyboard. And if I am playing an F, so I'll just go ahead and play um, an F sharp or a G flat, right? So the student can see the black key and they're going to identify that. And they might say, well, that's G flat, but it's also F sharp. And the answer is, you're right. So on the footballs, yes, that's my attempt at writing footballs. <laughs> I know, musician, yes, artist, not so much. So in the footballs, they're going to write G flat and F sharp because it could be either one. And now remember, they're looking at the keyboard with you. So now I'm going to take my F sharp, G flat, and I'm going to change that note down to the white key. Now remember, this is accidentals. So then they need to identify that key. And with that key, it's going to be F natural. So they're going to go ahead and add the F natural sign in there. Then we can do the same for uh, the black keys of B flat or A sharp, right? So they're going to go ahead and write it in. And this time I might go up to B natural. And so then again, they would use the natural sign. So when we engage in all three modalities, we're really helping our students learn faster and just in a fun and spontaneous way. And today we played sports notes and we learned about um, the half note and stem direction with donuts and pizza. We learned about ledger lines and note names um, on the keyboard at different pitches. Let me put my little game back up here. Right. And um, we also identified accidentals such as the sharp and the flat and the natural sign by looking at the keys. So we played our sports notes and I really hope that you have enjoyed little Sola and Tito and really engage in learning in a playful way. Uh, I've really enjoyed playing sports notes with you today and I hope you've enjoyed playing along with me. In our next video, I'll reveal reason number 11 in the top 15 reasons why you learn music theory faster through play in a game called, oops, that was kind of appropriate because the game is called Clap That. Yay. And you will learn two words that 
every student is excited to hear from their teacher and why these two words are so important to use in your teaching studio. That's just going to guarantee smiles during lesson plans. And I can't wait to share that with you. So grab your ultimate music theory party pack and be ready to play with the prep game pack, the basic game pack, your Solentito Steffies and the U of T student whiteboard. And of course you get your little marker and your eraser because we are going to continue to learn through play. I hope you've enjoyed this video on why we learn music theory faster through play. So please love, comment, share, subscribe, so you'll have access to all of our upcoming videos. And don't forget to join our Ultimate Music Theory Facebook group because we have an absolute blast in sharing knowledge and uh, just encouraging each other to teach with passion. Till next time, sparkle like a Sola. <laughs> See you later. Thanks, Sola. That was fun.